Welcome to a Freightway special report. Really sad news this morning. Celadon is no longer. Having filed bankruptcy after dealing with post-scandal restructuring attempts, they were not successful and unfortunately would close the doors. The company has filed Chapter 11 bankruptcy, which normally means restructuring, but they do plan on shutting the over-the-road operations and have given notice to all the employees that they're out of a job. Driver payroll and contractor services, payment services, staff are expected to stay with the company through the end of the month and will be working on a systematic wind down process. Stephen, this is a very sad story for everyone involved. It is. I was monitoring social media Saturday and, and you know, yesterday and even this morning when the notice finally came out from Celadon when they sent the Omnitrax message out at midnight. and. Uh, Granted, you know, drivers had a lot of time to to recognize that it was happening, but without an official word, they you know, they were kind of left wondering what's going on. And uh, and then on the main Facebook group, the Sell It On Driver group, there was a bunch of um, recruiters that came on, and I almost feel that they kind of stirred the pot a little bit on on what was actually going on. And there's <laughs> there's so much bad advice on those groups that it's it's it's. It's just very, very important for the drivers that are out there that they just need to focus on, on just getting their trucks, getting home, finding a new job. I know it's Christmas. I mean, we're, what, 10 days away from Christmas now, and, and now you have 2,700 drivers. Plus, I don't know what happens with the subsidiaries, but it, it looks like there's a lot of drivers that are affected and a lot of drivers that, in my opinion, kind of got a short shaft on the notice side. They weren't they weren't notified. Yeah, it's 4,000 total employees that Is have it? been laid off in this uh, situation. Uh, uh, really sad. I, I I would say, I agree with you. I think a lot of competitors piled on. There was good. It was good to right. see the industry offering free rides and transportation, and trying to put information out. But there was also recruiters are trying to you know they, they get paid based on how many drivers they recruit right. and how many they seat and i think some of that activity started to become lord of the flies and and it wasn't real a uh, process but in fairness celadon didn't put any official information out which left a lot of uh just emptiness without direction i think that's the if there's a pr this became a PR crisis of sorts because they weren't putting out information in the hands of drivers. I, I think that the, I don't think the DMs or anybody actually knew what was going on the entire time. From from what I saw online, I don't know if if any of the DMs. Knew I don't think they did because you know there was such almost transparency from the you know or it, it aligned too well I guess for when a carrier is saying hey you know we can't get in, in touch with anybody. We heard on Saturday that that you know the fuel cards were turned off and and there were several reports of drivers that were getting PMs and or you know preventative maintenance and, and, and roadside and all of a sudden TA just said nope we can't do it anymore. My um, understanding is that the fuel cards got turned off because Celadon or because Comdata was not willing to accept the risk of a bankruptcy right. it was, and it was there was not a plan uh, to really deal with that so uh, or money set aside to do that. Right. Um, the one of the uh, banks came in and guaranteed the funds over the weekend, right. uh, which actually helped. Uh, it does. I, I fielded a call yesterday. Someone was basically sent me a message and said that the carrier authorities were revoked. Which no, it, that's, it, it's that's, not. And carrier it's, authority and insurance is not revoked. They right. have prepaid for their insurance and carrier authority. Well, they're self-insured too, aren't they? Well, so. but, but self-insured in a bankruptcy is a problem because then you have this question of who do you sue if right. something happens. Right. The bigger issue comes down to just the fact that uh, there wasn't a lot of communication. I, you know, that's the part. So it went for me where Friday night it was the story, Saturday was the story. Later in the day on Saturday is where I started to get really worried about the driver's well-being right. in this process and the fact that they weren't, there wasn't a lot of communication because there was a, just a lot of desperation. You could see it, you could, uh, you could see it on the pages. There were right. discussions about uh, just wellness and, and, and talking about things like, you know, here's suicide hotline just in terms of mental I saw health that awareness. Too. And I think that's just a reflection. I mean, driving is a stressful job. Many of these drivers uh, uh, that are out there feel isolated, uh, don't know what's happening, already feel that way. Right. And because of the loneliness of it and not having a lot of resources, it's, it's, it's actually quite sad. 
I mean, on a, a personal level, I took, you know, my, my son, because I was so, you know, I was at home for the weekend and I was, you know, trying to monitor social media as much as I could and I was paying attention to what my, or, you know, I, I was talking about it with my wife and everybody. And, it, uh, you know, my son asked, he's like, how come, why aren't they telling the drivers? And, and it kind of, it, it sounds silly, but I didn't have an answer for him. And for someone that, that really loves logistics and loves trucking and loves the industry, it, 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 I found it personally upsetting that there, was, there wasn't a lot of transparency. It's, it's really reminiscent of Falcon, just randomly shutting down. And, and you know, I don't think the, the drivers with Falcon had a lot of notice either. They had no notice. Yeah. They basically were found out Saturday night. The difference here yeah. uh, is that there is a systematic process. Right. Drivers are going to get paid. They are working to get them home. There are resources set up to and the assist them in the process. On, so. Fuel cards are on, yeah. uh, hopefully, uh, to get them back to uh, a terminal or even a truck stop. They were, the last I had heard is they were told to go to a truck stop and leave the keys, take yeah. photos of it, stuff. Uh, the, the, the point is you shouldn't ever put your truck on the side of a highway and leave it. You could be held person responsible if th something happens and someone hits your truck, so be sure to protect the, uh, protect the drivers on the road as well as yourself by putting the truck into a truck stop or at a terminal. Worst case, if you're not near a Celadon terminal, the best thing that you can do is go to another trucking company that perhaps you're uh, looking to get employment with and ask them if you can park the truck temporarily uh, as uh, this process sort of unwinds itself. Really? I, I talked to a lot of carriers over the weekend that said that if a driver was joining them or was inquiring to join them and came into their terminal, yeah. they would give them permission to park the truck there and trailer. And frankly, that may be the best spot because uh, those companies don't want to keep it there long term and they have relationship with the lenders right. and they're likely to help get it out uh, to the lenders. There's also a lot of private lots that are advertising that they're more than welcome, <laughs> welcoming trucks to go and park the store their so trucks they can there. Bill. So they can, they can well, bill. They can yeah. file for a lien after storage, you know, aren't paid. I don't know how that works with the BK situation, but I saw several. There was one, <laughs> one guy in southern Florida, he's like, I got 20 acres, I'll buy your bus ticket too. He's Someone's like, going to end up with a, a, <laughs> a load lot of full trucks. of flat screen TV. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, or Xboxes that's just yeah. going to sit on a lot yeah. and not be found. And this is likely to happen. There's going to yeah. be the cargo itself is in tra that's in transit is is, is certainly uh, going to be stressful. The company did notify a number of shippers that they were shutting down. Unfortunately, that information didn't make it to the drivers. You know, it's easy for us to play money boarding quarterback literally right. and and sort of second guess what happened. I think we see it because we're in it. Right. We're we're in media and we see the side of it. Um, I do think certainly the company could have done a better job of communicating. However, when you're dealing with a bankruptcy, having to file public shareholders, banks, that's a very stressful process for management. Frankly, imagine. management that's currently there is not responsible for the shutdown. They're not right. the reason this happened. They could have communicated better and perhaps should have been more proactive. But I think in terms of, of uh, where things stand now, they are taking, uh, uh, they sent the message out to the employees, they're, and they're, they're, they're making sure drivers get paid and stuff. Yeah. And so I think it's, it's easy for us to sit back and look at it. Uh, perhaps they, you know, when we covered the story on Friday night, perhaps that was earlier than they had expected. Right. When we spoke with them uh, last week, it sounded like their plan was to uh, file bankruptcy and shut down the company on Wednesday. Right. Uh, unfortunately, with what happened this weekend, our story broke on Friday night. With what happened this weekend, that might have accelerated it by two days. I don't think it changed the outcome at all. Um, one <coughs> resource I spoke to at the company had said that they regretted the fact that the story was out there over the weekend. However, in the long run, it probably was better because it's easier. Freight gets delivered on Monday, and uh, there aren't new dispatches going out on Monday. I don't know. It's easy for us to do it. We're going to dive into this story and other bankruptcies, uh, do a deep dive research. There isn't a lot of, there isn't really a playbook for this type of thing uh, in the market, but our research team is going to start to go through all the various shutdowns and bankruptcies and document what's happened and basically provide a playbook. It's not something anyone wants to read right. uh, or necessarily have to, to play with, but there are things that companies can do in these situations which make the, the life easier. Because in six months or a year, everybody associated with Celadon will be completely out of it, including management. 
likely including the lenders, and the lives of many will remember how they were treated uh, upon the exit. And hopefully, from today forward, uh, they can all get the resources that they need. I want to remind everybody, there's certainly a lot of opportunities for drivers to get employment. And that's exciting because there's you know, a, a lot of uh, opportunities for those drivers. But there are 500 employees at the company that managed everything from breakdown to operations to dispatch right. to recruiting that aren't going to have the same uh, opportunities without relocation. Right. Just, there isn't a, an employer in Indianapolis that's going to be able to absorb all of those employees. I want to remind companies as they look at their staff not to forget about those 500 employees. Take time to look at LinkedIn and look at the profiles and see if there are jobs that you have today that you could fulfill. These people would be grateful for the effort and thank you for the opportunity for giving them the opportunity. Uh, we will have more information on this story throughout the day as well as this week. And we're trying to get, figure out all the pieces of it. This is the largest bankruptcy in truckload history. It is one of the largest bankruptcies in the entire trucking history. Uh, the LTL providers, Consolidated Freightways, perhaps is the biggest. But this is certainly the largest abruptly shut down in truckload history. And just a very sad story that was caused by negligence and then criminal mischief by former executives of the company. And I think if anyone deserves the blame, it's them. And hopefully they'll see their day in jail and will serve a very long sentence.